What is up lads, ladesses and hermaphrodites, my name is Hafo and today we are doing uh, my long awaited uh, Cinema 4D Buju and After Effects tutorial um, which is basically how to make 3D text and put it on a cinematic or whatever you want to put it on it can be used for any game uh, it can be used in with real life footage so if you've got a camera it can be used with absolutely anything I'm obviously just demonstrating it with Call of Duty um, this is going to be quite a long tutorial um, and I know not all of you are going to be able to do it because not everyone has Buju and Cinema 4D but uh, if you do have them just bear with me with this tutorial it's a good it's a really nice effect and I got a load of good feedback on uh, the preview which I uploaded earlier um, as you can see there it is and this is what we're going to be making um, just go just the 3d text and it's going to move um, as if it's part of the cinematic um, and yeah it's really easy once you kind of get the hang of it uh, and yeah so what we're going to do is I've prepared my I prefer to prepare a folder here I've already pre-prepared the stuff but basically you're going to want um, a raw cinematic which I've got here as you can see and literally it's just my it's it's not meant to be that laggy, it's just my uh, screen recorder makes my screen a bit laggy. Um, it's just a regular cinematic, Modern Warfare 2, and yeah, that's all you need. Uh, I, I just open that now in After Effects, as you can see, um, when it loads. So, here we go. So, we're just going to import our, um, our raw footage, and... I haven't colour corrected this and I haven't done anything to it, no wiggle, I would do that afterwards if I was you. Um, so yeah, here we go, I'll just drag it into a composition. And I've already pre-cropped this and stuff, so this is fine for me. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go to composition and add to render queue once we're happy with what we've got. And we're going to put click on lossless here on the output module and change the format to JPEG sequence, no sorry what am I saying, PNG sequence, but you can do JPEG sequence if you want but I'm gonna go with PNG sequence and click OK. Um, also if you recorded this, if you um, earlier on if when you imported your clip you imported a 59.94 frames per second clip which is HD obviously, you're just gonna want to change the composition settings to 30 uh, frames per second, it just basically makes it a lot lot faster when it renders and stuff and it's just a lot more um well just basically easier for you so i'm just going to i'm not going to render that now because i've already done that but yeah all you do is render your jpeg no your png sequence and export it i would save it in some sort of folder because there's going to be a lot of these files as you can see i've already pre prepared pre prepared mine and there's one basically photograph or PNG file for every single frame of the um, of the video. So there's that part done, there's the After Effects part done. Now as I said once we've exported our PNG sequence we're just going to drag it into Buju. Uh, well not drag it in, we're going to open it in Buju and I will show you what to do there. Um, I'm trying to make this tutorial as quick as I can. If you have any questions afterwards because you don't quite understand, that's fine, you know, just message me or leave a comment. Uh, this is the hard bit, the Buju bit, trust me, it's, uh, but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy. I'm using Buju 5, um, which is slightly different, and I'm, I will put why in the description, I can't quite remember why. But once we've opened up Buju, it looks all complicated, but it's really not that hard. We're going to just import our sequence. And we're going to find where we where we saved our PNG files. I saved mine to my desktop. So I'm obviously going to look on the desktop. And there's my folder. And we're going to click on the very first one, which is motion 0000001. Or whatever. And just click open. Um, we're going to change the frame rate to 30, because that's what our frame rate is. Um, we're just going to click apply. Um, when it applies, and we're going to click close, obviously. And um, just to make sure that I'm on 30 frames, I'm just going to click Edit Camera here. And I think that was fine. Yeah, should be fine. So, yeah, you change it to 30 frames or however many frames you're doing. 
and then we're going to click on track features so this may take a few minutes I'm just going to click um, make sure I haven't missed anything no that's fine yeah okay so you're just going to click start on track features and this will take a minute or so so I'll just come back once it's finished okay and uh, we're back it's done it motion tracked quite nicely as you can see as you just go through it yeah it uh, it looks okay um, no problems there and it took around four minutes to do yours will probably be faster than mine mine's just not the fastest computer as I say in every tutorial um, yeah that, so once that is done uh, we're gonna click here where it says camera solve and we are just going to click optimize ca camera path smoothness uh, and then click start and then that'll take shouldn't take as long actually as you can see it's really very fast it's nearly done um and the next bit that we're going to do after this all right so that's done nearly right here we go so what that's done is it's found some points which are basically consistent throughout the video and then it's just tracked them ones as you can see the most obvious ones are the ones that stick out like corners of things and um, like that the curb there just a bit of stare but the one where I want to put the text is in the middle here so there's not that many but uh, we should be okay I think yeah um, okay so next we're going to have to this is the hard bit and basically it involves us clicking on scene geometry okay and what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to tell Vuju where the floor is basically that's what we're doing then um, so we'll go to add coordinate from hint and and the first one we're gonna do is the z-axis so this means that so like from front to back sort of thing so so I'm going to click that one there. So you've got to basically select which uh which points on the on the track in um suit each one. So from front to back would be this one to that one because um uh, it goes obviously I want my text around this area so I'm telling it that the floor is here. So it's quite complicated but once you get the hang of this it's fine. So it's going to click um connect to selected there and that just uh connects those two points to the z-axis so we're gonna do it again click add coordinate from hint and this time we're gonna do the x-axis and uh, that one is from left to right or right to left or whatever and uh, all we're gonna do for here is just click um, the one from the left and then choose one from the right uh, I'm tempted to do these ones here actually that'll be fine so there's left to right and a nice straight line that's what we want so we're going to click connect to selected um you can do the um the y axis but i don't tend to do it on this especially if you kind of want your um your text floating then you could do the y axis but I, if you're doing it on the floor i tend not to and all that does is kind of chooses the height and stuff like that so you don't really have to do that um the next one i'm going to do is origin so i'm going to add coordinate from hint origin and then we're just going to basically pick one that's like fairly in the center of all of them so I'm just going to pick here it's not really in the center but I'm sure it'll be fine so you just pick like um, around about a center point and that'll then just connect that to selected and then then we've got to click at the bottom here where it says update uh, coordinate frame click that and that should link them all fine I'm going to click it a few times to make sure and then click close when we're done and now if I test this, so click here, add test object, that looks nice. So it just adds basically a random ladybird. <laughs> Don't quite know why, but and then and then you can just check to see if it's all alright and mine looks absolutely fine. I'm sure yours will be fine as well. So yeah, now we're gonna go to no, export and export camera solve. Now this bit's very important, as uh, yeah, this will, you can either make it or break it here, guys. So we're gonna go to export type and change it to Cinema 4D, um, and we're gonna choose like to save it somewhere. So I'm just gonna save it to my desktop as I always do. Um, 
desktop. Oh crap, right. So, and I'm just going to call it whatever, just uh, cinema oh, tutorial file. Don't know, yeah, that's, that'll be fine. And then we're going to change our sc uh, scale scene by to 100. This is very, very, very important. I cannot, like, I cannot tell you how important that is. If you don't do it, it will die. You may die if you don't do this. So, uh, do that. Yeah, 100. And then click save. And now it'll just save. And it'll take a while. There we go. Done. <laughs> Didn't take a while. So, once we're done with that, we'll just close that. Save it. Yep. Um, tutorial. Seems to be what I call everything nowadays. Tutorial or file or... When I can't think of a name. Anyway, so we're going to um, open up Cinema 4D now. And this... We pretty much got the hard bit over with now. Um, it's just important to Cinema 4D and putting it all together and making it look good. Um, so I'll join you in a minute once my Cinema 4D loads and various other things load. <laughs> so I'll see you in a minute. Alright guys, we're back in Cinema 4D. Uh, it's opened up and everything and we have imported um, our our Cinema 4D file which we made in Buju and then when you import it it'll come up with this so Lightwave 3D import scale you can leave that at 10 don't change that and if it's not at 10 then you want to make it 10 and just leave everything else as it is so click OK and as you will see now that has opened up in our Cinema 4D like viewer thing and uh, we can see the path of which the motion track is going to take so now we're going to make a um, background. So we're going to hold down this little light and where it says background we're going to click that and then make a new material. So f at the bottom file, new material uh, double click that. I'm just going to turn off specular and where it says colour we're going to uh, click the texture and load image. I'm just going to go for the first uh, you've got to click the first image in your motion sequence, so like we did earlier when we opened it up in Buju, you're just going to click the same one again, the first one, and then just click no for that. So now it opens up like this, we're going to click the path, so it says on my end, users slash Michael slash desktop. Yours, where whatever yours is, you're just going to click that. And then here where it says animation, at the top, you're going to click that. And then at the bottom of the animation page, it'll say calculate, it's going to click that, literally. That is it. You're going to just close that off. Yep, and then drag that onto your background, like so. Now, as you will see, it shows up as like the movie file, and it looks fine. So, now we are going to just add some text, just to make sure everything's looking good. Um, so, MoGraph text object, and we're just going to scale that down a little bit, it's a bit big. Um, like so. And I'm just going to change that as well, just to make it say halfo. You can have obviously what say what it what you want. You won't, probably won't have it say halfo unless you <laughs> unless you want it to say halfo. But and then we're just going to change the font and so on, and so forth, like so. And that looks good, I think. Yeah, that looks fine. Um, make it scale it down slightly. There we go. That looks fine. And uh, now we're just going to uh, create a quick material. This is going to be nothing fancy, guys. Uh, if I wanted to spend time on a material, I could quite easily do that, but I don't want to because it's just I'm uh, time is of the essence here. So it's gonna make that nice looking material there and just drag it on. And as you will see, it looks balls, looks wank basically. Um, now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna create a floor so we can get some shadow going on, make it look a bit better, and we can also create a light as well as to make it look better than it does there, it looks awful there. So as I say, hold down the light and click floor. And so we get this like, obviously we get a floor but it makes it look, if you render it out, it just completely ruins it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're on our material, we're just gonna hold control and drag that across there. So it kind of duplicates the material. Then we're gonna double click it. And uh, no we're not, we're not even gonna double click it. We're just going to change the, uh, we're going to click on the material, well we're going to drag it onto our floor first. We're going to click it and we're going to change the projection projection to frontal. And uh, now we're going to click on the floor itself. 
Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, projection frontal. Click the floor and go to Cinema 4D tags and click on compositing, like so. Now on compositing, where it says self shadowing, untick that and tick compositing background, like so. And now that'll give us, like, apparently it should make the floor disappear, and it has done, which is great. So, um, now that the floor has, like, gone invisible when we render it, we are going to create a light, so we can get some shadow going on. Uh, you can do this in After Effects, but I much prefer to do it in Cinema 4D. I think it's just a lot easier, but it's up to you, you know, if you want to do it in... After Effects, I'm not going to do a tutorial on that. You can probably find one on the internet, how to light, how to add shadowing. Uh, I believe it's very easy, but I just don't fancy doing it on mine. I'd just rather do it here. So, um, on the light, we're going to click on where it says Shadow. Go to Shadow Maps Soft. And change the density to 50. Like so. And now, when we click it, we have Shadow Success. And that's great, so if we just move it down the timeline, have a look. That looks fine, and I would move the light to where the sun is roughly going to be on the map, or wherever, like, so say you're recording it in the street, wherever the sun, whatever rough direction that's coming from, you just going to, you might want to just add the light to that direction just to make it look more realistic in terms of shadows. Um, that looks fine, and maybe just change that a little bit, but once it's got editing and stuff onto it, um, I'm sure it'll look great. So I'm just going to quickly show you how to export this. You're just going to click on this little button at the top where it says render settings. Uh, I change my... I'll just leave my output... No, actually, frame range, change that to all frames. If you want all frames, or you can do manual and change it to, say, like 1 to 30 if you so wanted to. And the save where it says format, you're just going to change that to QuickTime Movie. I want to save mine to my desktop. Just change it to a tutorial as I always do, and that should be fine. Uh, we're just going to click this button here, uh, where it says Render Region or Render to Picture Viewer, just click that. Just click Render Region. No, don't. Just going to click it. There we go, Picture Viewer. Perfect. So now this will render, and uh, I will come back once it's finished. I will, yeah, and I'll tell you how it resulted. Thanks. Right, guys, we have finished rendering, and Basically that's done. Now all I have to do is just drag it into After Effects, um, which I can quickly do now if you want. But from there, right, as you can see here it is, here's the file on my desktop. For some reason my computer doesn't like, it just takes a while to load. So I'm going to quickly, I'll just show you it in After Effects. Oh, here we go. Um, I don't know if this will work. But anyway, all I'm going to, all I do in After Effects would be just to literally add a colour correction. I think that's very important when you've got such a, a wank. Um, material such as like I've got there. Um, I also like to add some particles and wiggle and various other effects which you can find on my channel. Um, but yeah, that's that is basically it. I mean, the hardest bit is Buju. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this tutorial or found it useful um, or helpful or whatever, if you found if you enjoyed this tutorial, basically, could you please leave a like? I really appreciate it. Uh, I've spent quite a lot of time trying to figure this one out. It's been one that I've had requested for months. And uh, I've never really been able to do. And I was messing around on Buju yesterday. And uh, I finally figured it out, which is great. Um, and I just wanted to kind of show you guys. I know other people can do it. and It's really common. Uh, commonly used in videos. So if you, as I say, if you enjoyed it, could you please leave a like. I hope you enjoyed. Um, there's also more tutorials on my channel. Um, of like everything. And... Uh, for those of you watching it in August, I'm doing a, like, if you're not watching it in the future, I mean, um, basically this, this weekend I'll be starting up my editing contest, which will run for a couple of weeks. So yeah, look out for that if you're interested, and I hope you enjoy, guys. Thanks for watching.